So let's look at using your shell effectively. So in my case, I'm using Bash um, on Kadoosh. So first thing to note is if you're running a command that will take a while, uh, you can always run it in the background. So let's say, for instance, I'm looking for the pattern foo inside uh, recursively, starting at the current directory, and I want to output that into a file, let's say, temp uh, foo.out. If I run it, oh, I get a lot of error messages. Let's go ahead and put an ampersand in front of it so that both the standard output and the standard error both get redirected in the output file. So it runs, it runs, it runs, it runs, it runs. Well, that could take a while. So let me control C that and run it in the background. And now it's running. Okay, I can list the jobs I have, and I have one running job that's running in the background, and I'll get notified once it's done. Okay. The, but what happens if I run a um, program and I didn't start it in the background? Okay, how do I get it in the background? Well, let's try bar Whoops, that's not what I want. I want the ampersand version. Okay, so it's running in the foreground. How could I get it in the background? Well, what you could do is you can always do Control Z. So Control Z suspends a program that's running. And you could put that in the background. And now we have two jobs running in the background. Okay, I could bring one to the foreground by doing percent one. I can Control Z it to come back out. Now one's running, one's not. I can background percent one and then the both running. Is that useful? Well, it's definitely useful for long running programs. And so now they're both finished. Um, but here's how it gets to be really useful. Let's say I have a vim file open. So let's say I'm vim in kern slash console.c. And by the way, I think I hope you all know that if it's a tab key, that it will do completion. So console.c. And now, let's say I'm making some changes. What I'm doing is I'm going through a cycle. I'm editing a file and making some changes, and then I am making uh, key monox. So what I can do, rather than what people would normally do, which is write and quit their changes and then make key monox, And then when I'm done with that, control, control AX, and then come back in and kern console.c again. A much simpler way to do this is instead of writing and quitting, write, and then just control Z. And now it's still waiting there in the background. And now I can do my make again, see whatever happened after my last changes, okay, and then exit again, and then just foreground to bring them back in the foreground. So I very often will, when I'm vimming, not quit. I will just control Z to maintain its state so I can come back in, because I know I'm going to be editing this file again. And in fact, many times I may have multiple vim files open at once. You can always choose which one you want to bring to the foreground by choosing percent one, percent two, percent three, etc. So that's job control. Very useful. What else might you want to know about? Another thing to know about is the directory stack. So there's a stack of directories. So often, let's say you'll let's say CD somewhere. Okay, CD from here, and then you CD let's say back uh, CD home. What if you want to get back to where you were? Well, there, there actually is a way to do that. You could do CD minus. So CD minus takes you back to where you last were. And so that's handy. But there's also a stack of directories that you can maintain. So instead of CDing someplace, perhaps you push D someplace. So now I have a stack. And you can see the top of the stack 
is this new directory I just specified, and this is the next item on the stack. And from here, let's say I want to push D to slash temp, and so now I have three items on the stack. Okay. Um, very common to want to pop, swap the top two items on the stack, and so there you could just do push D. So you could push D back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. Um, that is uh, very common in there. So, and then you can also pop D. So pop D takes an element off the stack, pop D, and so on. So that's very handy because often you want to get back to particular directories that you've been in. We have a history. So history tells you all the last commands you've run. Uh, a number gives you just the last number of those commands. So this is the last 20 commands I've run. You can easily rerun a command. So for instance, 550 will rerun this command, which just clears the screen. Um, that's handy, I guess. But what's also handy is you can do bang, bang. So exclamation, exclamation. Um, and bang, bang just reruns the last command, which in this case was a reset. Let's do an ls, then bang, bang again. That's an ls. So that's not particularly easier than just hitting an up arrow. But here's what is handy. You can rerun the last command starting with a particular letter. So or so bang C is going to run the last command starting with a C. Bang, uh, let's go to FA20 slash FA20. Uh, bang M is probably going to be the last make command. Yep. So I utilize that a lot in that if I, again, am editing a file, like let's say this file right here, I'll write it, I'll control Z, and then I'll do a make. And then when I'm happy and you know doing my testing, then I'll do foreground, come back in here, make any changes I want, write them, control Z, and then again, do a bang M for make. So that's really handy. Um, you can also run the last command that contained any characters. Uh, and there are some fancy stuff that you can do with that that I'm not going to get into. Um, but some of the, one thing that's, that's useful is, let's say... Uh, so let's say we had a command where I said ls uh, kern console.h, or .c, rather. And I would say, gee, I want to do the same thing, except with a dot .h instead of a dot .c. You can do up arrow, and then the, replace, the text to replace, and then up arrow, and then the replacement text. So it reruns the last command, replacing a dot .c with a dot .h. Um, you could run the last command, uh, replacing, let's say, every O with an X. Not that that's going to be that useful in this case, but sometimes that's useful. And sometimes you might just say, what's the last command starting with MA, and just print it out. All right. um, sometimes I want to do something with the last, so let's say ls uh, kern slash console.h, and then I want to copy that somewhere. Rather than repeating it, I can just do exclamation dollar sign and that references the last parameter of the last command. So I can maybe copy that to slash tip. Okay. So I find that very, very helpful. Uh, a lot of times what you may want to do is you may want to do interactive editing of a line. So if you run set minus O VI, that will turn on uh, the option of VI mode. Okay? The you normally would want to set that in your tilde slash dot bash rc. So let's see if I have it set in there. Uh, I don't actually, um, but maybe I should. Um, and anyway, so what ha can happen is as you're typing, um, you know, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. And you realize, hmm, this isn't really actually very good. I need to edit this. One way you could do is hit backspace until let's do something that's more correct. So control U, um, 
deletes the entire line. That'll work in almost any program. Uh, so let's say I am want to copy uh, kern slash console, and I accidentally mistype xh instead of dot uh, h, and I want to copy it into slash temp slash uh, foo dot bar, and then I say, oh, that x is wrong. I need to make it a, a dot. Well, what you can do is hit the escape key, and then you're in VI mode. So I'm using H and L to move back and forth, but I can also use any Vim commands, like I can do a capital F X, which will find reverse, in reverse mode, the X character. Or I can do up arrow to go to the last, the beginning line, dollar sign to go to the end of the line. Um, I can go B, so backwards. I can do W to go forward words. So you, all the Vim knowledge that uh, your keys or your, your fingers learn, you can use on the command line as well. And then when you're done, you can either just hit return to X, oh, so anyway, here I am. I want to change that X to a period. I'm going to use Vim for that. So I'm going to use uh, R period, which replaces one character. And then I can either go to the end of the line, so get out of Vim mode by hitting escape, or I can just hit return as a shortcut for execute that. And then if I look, and let's remove that file. How would I move it easily? Let me just use bang ampersand. Okay, that's the last. So that Vim mode is pretty handy. There's an Emacs mode as well if you're more of an Emacs user. So these are just some of the handy things uh, to learn about Bash. There's a lot more you can learn. Uh, you probably want to learn about scripting. You want to learn about uh, looping. Um, there's a lot more, but these are some of the basics that I find that people don't necessarily know.